if you could just uh, raise your hand uh, using the emoticons to let me know that you can hear me all right, or type yes in the chat pane, that would be great. Okay, yes, yeah, so people can hear, I think. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so let me welcome you to this afternoon's um, In Brief on Cloud Computing Tools. My name is Lynn Lal, and uh, I'm joined by my colleague Gordon Milner this afternoon. And we're hoping to share with you some thoughts and ideas about um, cloud-based tools. If you want to respond um, or pose questions, we'll keep an eye on the chat pane. Uh, and there'll be opportunities to interact throughout the session. You should have all received um, a file, a Word document transferred to you when you logged in, which will have links to lots of resources to explore after the session. Um, and if you want to get in touch with the RSC for support afterwards with any of what we discussed, then, then please contact us. Details are on our website. So the first thing we'd like to do is find out um, I'll just give you a brief overview of the session. So we're going to be talking about um, the benefits of using cloud-based tools. We're going to signpost you to some of those resources and show you some examples. There'll be opportunities to discuss how the tools can be used to enhance learner experience or from an administrative point of view or business support point of view, increase effectiveness and efficiency. There'll be opportunities for you to share what you're using and uh, we'll briefly touch on uh, legal issues. But just before we get stuck in, uh, it would be useful to know a little bit about you and what your role is in particular. So I'd like to ask you to um, use the drop-down list above the main list of participants to just give us an indication of your role, please. Support and business support. Um, Advisor, trainer. Got one minute. We've got. So that'll be 26. I know we haven't got everybody responding yet. Okay, so you can either type in the chat pane if you can't find where. Or some of you are crossing some boundaries there. I see. So the foot in several camps. Okay, so we've got some managers, and we've got quite a few of practitioners, and some learning support staff, and business support staff, so quite a nice uh, mix there. Okay, thank you. Right, I'm going to ask uh, my colleague Gordon then to, first of all, think, get you to think about why you might want to use the cloud. Hi, good afternoon to you. Um, you'll notice that I'm also speaking on Lynn's uh, mic, so when it's coming through, but... Uh, don't worry, we've got a dual personality this afternoon. So, um, the, the cloud. Um, well, I think it might be useful at this point, before we actually start, is to actually say what the cloud is, um, just in case you're not quite aware of you know, what, what it involves. Um, the cloud, I would say, is any sort of program application um, that is running outside of your organization. Um, so, and the best way to probably uh, say that is probably with uh, applications that are running out on the internet. Um, so, if you can think, probably most people know Google uh, and the facilities that that offers in Google Docs. And with Google Docs, you can word process spreadsheet uh, and create presentations um, from within within that on their website. So, it's not actually inside your organisation. So, quick summary: cloud is uh, everything that's outside of your organization. Um, so the sort of benefits of using the cloud um, is particularly relevant nowadays as we're moving to a much more of a flexible sort of working and living sort of environment. Um, and we're using mobile devices for that. Um, so the cloud is allowing us to use those devices in an any time, any place sort of situation. And that could be intercontinental um, or it could be just down the street. Um, it also allows chances to actually share and collaborate quite easily uh, with other people um, outside of your organisation or within the organisation. For instance, a, a group of studio, uh, sorry, a group of um, students, um, you know, participating, for instance, in a task. 
Um, if you think certainly of um, Google Docs, I'm not promoting Google Docs in any way, but it's a good way to actually um, think of it, is with the uh, creating a word process document, that there actually gives you potential now to take that outside of your organization uh, and keep it for life. Um, and with the emails that uh, are out, available out on the cloud, does the same sort of thing. So you could have an email address for life, um, a storage area to put information for life, uh, and so on. Um, it's been raised that there could be potential cost savings in infrastructure. Because you're using facilities that are out on the internet uh, and not within the organization as such, it means that you could cut down on um, the cost of actually upgrading computers or upgrading uh, servers. Uh, and there has been meetings about cost savings in, in man hours as well in support of those. That one may not be necessarily true as such because you know, to, to work in the cloud, you've still got to have the technical staff to actually support that. So it may be a sort of realignment of responsibilities for technical staff um, rather, uh, in supporting the cloud-based tools rather than uh, supporting the ones that are in-house. As far as barriers are concerned, you need an internet connection. That could be through wireless um, in multiple sort of places now, uh, airports, train stations, um, or, or inside your organization uh, or at home. Uh, and of course, 3G on mobile devices and some uh, getting 4G as well. Because you're actually having to uh, use devices in some form or another, it could well be issues of uh, access to all this um, equipment uh, and access to the internet. So it's just making sure that people can access it as, as necessary. So maintaining some equality. Um, certainly one of the biggest bugbears for uh, the technical staff, for your IT administrators uh, and network managers, is actually the security and control of what's actually happening on um, the organization's devices or what people are connecting to um, on their Wi-Fi uh, and so on. So th there's quite a number of issues there um, that are, are still being resolved and will continue to be resolved. So, um, so that's essentially the benefits and the, the sort of barriers for, for using the cloud. Okay, thanks, Gordon. I should just say at this point, uh, we have actually turned off the video. So for those of you who thought you'd lost video, uh, we did that deliberately so that it doesn't distract from the discussion, and we'll probably turn it back on just at the end briefly. Um, I think somebody's just said why we've turned the video off. Thank you. Um, right, so before we start talking about any particular tools, uh, I'd just like to stress really that it's not necessarily the tools that you want to focus on, but what it is that you're trying to achieve. Um, and this little sort of information graphic here gives you uh, an idea of what I'm trying to convey here. So are you trying to develop um, information literacy skills or maybe you're trying to um, communicate and collaborate with colleagues or with learners? So think about what it is you want to achieve and then look at some of the tools that are available to achieve that aim. A lot of them will do the same thing uh, with, with slightly different nuances and really it's down to uh, personal preference often. But it's really not focusing so much on the tool and the technology but what it is that you want to achieve. And we will be looking at uh, some of these tools um, as we go through the session. So we're going to start off with and talking and thinking about collaboration tools. Um, already I've mentioned um, Google Docs, but of course that's just one of the products that's uh, out there. Google Docs providing word processing um, spreadsheets and presentations and also uh, Google Mail. Uh, but there is uh, as well Office 365, which is Microsoft's product. Um, and that's a sort of extension um, from the Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint that um, you have um, on your desktop normally. Um, so this is a cloud-based solution by, um, by Microsoft. Google Docs is free. Office 365 at this moment in time is sort of subscription. And I know from our GISC mail lists that there's been quite considerable discussion between the, um, the IT managers and with Microsoft as to you know, the actual licensing implications um, of installing it in a, or having access to it inside um, colleges and other organizations. Uh, and we, the students, can use it um, at home and, and so on. Those issues are still to be resolved. And I would say it's probably a work in progress. Because lo and behold, Apple, um, l uh, last week, 
um, they came out with the fact that iWork, um, which is available through their iCloud system, um, is available for free, or it will be available for free. Um, so iWork allowing you to word process and spreadsheet and other facilities, um, you know, it's going to be free. So it might well be that some of your users, either their students or staff, could be preferring that in some way or another, particularly if they might be uh, an Apple sort of user with their, their iPads and iPhones and, and so on. So we'll have to watch that space, I would say. But all of those tools allow you to collaborate online via the cloud um, with, with anybody. And that could be anyone across the world, project teams, other student classes, um, you know, in Australia uh, and so on. Uh, yes, uh, Gizzy or Gizzy, sorry, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that, but yeah, the, the iCloud is, is good um, if you're a sort of um, uh, an Apple type convert, I would say. Um, we're not going to be mentioning all the products on all these slides, but there's a, a few that we will pick out. Uh, and I'm just going to hand you over to Lynn to just have a chat about um, Padlet. Okay, thanks, Gordon. Um, also, just to mention in the files that we transferred to you at the beginning of the session, there is a, a link to a nice comparison of Google Docs versus Office 365, for instance. So, um, some of you may have come across this tool, uh, Padlet, which basically is um, stick it, post it notes on in an electronic um, context. So, here's an example, a screenshot of one I've used earlier. Um, where you can actually post a question or maybe post a task to your audience, get some um, extra explanation of what you'd like them to do, and then literally instead of writing on post-it notes and maybe sticking them on a wall later, they can click onto this um, electronic board and type their thoughts. They can also share uh, web links and put images in there as well, and everything is captured for everybody to have a look at and share. Um, so. In terms of modeling, trying to model best practice, what I'd like to do now is to get you guys to actually uh, contribute to a Padlet. And we've just posted the link for you into uh, the chat pane. We'd like you to click on that in a moment and maybe share any of top tools or favorite tools that you are using for collaborating, either with teams, with colleagues, or with learners. So if you'd like to click on that link now, and I'm going to share my desktop and see how that progresses as people add a few of their own um, ideas there. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully you can start just double clicking on the screen when you've clicked on your own link and um, start typing and sharing some of your favorite cloud-based tools with us for collaborating. If you don't have access to this, maybe you can type um, your ideas into the chat pane. Yeah, you'll have to work on it on your own um, sort of browser link. If you click on that link, yes. that will take you away. Um, and then you can start clicking on it. And then hopefully, um, it will then refresh on our screen so that you can see what's happening. Yeah. Oh, right. We've got lots of ideas already there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm just going to change the way that we view these so that we can see them um, as they're coming in. Right, so we've got Smart Notebook, Dropbox, SkyDrive, Office 365, Neopod, Google Docs, Text Walls, yeah, another good one. And quite a few here from Gizzy, Pinterest, Socrative, Delicious, Flipboard, Dropbox. Okay, some, some nice ideas coming through here. OK, um, if you want to continue adding to that after the session, you can do. Um, and the link that we've sent you, you'll still have access to that. So you can look at everybody else's um, ideas and tools that they're using and maybe explore those a bit further. But for now, I'm going to go back to the presentation. So 
thank you for those thoughts that you've shared. So hopefully you should see uh, my screen again now, the whiteboard and the presentation. So another question for you. Um, Gordon is going to explain this one for you. Yeah, this is one that um, is interesting for me um, in so much as, you know, is, is it actually more important to teach actual applications or is it more important to actually te teach concepts? I remember teaching Clate many years ago, with, you know, and teaching Word 2 and, and, you know, Excel and all those sort of things uh, to people because it was fairly new at the time. Um, but now as we move into the cloud, is it all changing? Um, you know, the tools that businesses use and students and staff and others use you know, may not be the standard sort of applications that we think of. Um, and that could be for art, you know, things like Photoshop. You know, is it important to actually teach actual applications like Photoshop? Um, or is it more important to actually teach concepts of, let's say, graphic editing, photo editing, art and design, design concepts, you know, uh, and so on. So, um, quick poll then, if you can use your voting um, tick box um, there and say a yes or no, is it more important to actually teach applications or is it more important to teach concepts? Okay. Right. Right. Okay, some people are saying it's important to teach um, some concepts, some teach some applications. Can't answer yes or no. Sorry about that. Um, this should hopefully be a, a No, paper. I think it's the way we phrased the oh, question, yeah. actually. Okay. Sorry, of all. Um, yeah, concepts. Yeah, if you just want to type in the, in the chat, both together. Yeah, concepts. Yeah, both. Okay. Both, yeah. Yeah, concepts are good to start with. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's good discussion. Thanks very much for that. There's a, a bit of a, a sort of smattering towards the concepts, perhaps, but equally just as valid, you know, is teaching the actual applications themselves. But I, I know from sort of personal experiences that things like the Photoshop, um, you know, is maybe not being so used um, so much in industry or people because a it's expensive. Um, you know, but you, there's lots of other tools that are out there now on the cloud for free that may well give many people and many businesses um, the actual facilities that they need. So just um, moving on, um, have a look at some sort of presenting tools. Now, lots of people know PowerPoint, I'm sure, and we've all been subjected to them um, in some way or another. Um, but you might want to consider some alternative tools, one there that's Prezi. Uh, and there's a bit of a, a sort of graphic to the right hand side about Prezi um, and that is more sort of visual based uh, one. Um, so you might get um, sick of PowerPoint uh, bullet points um, in some form or another. So having an alternative presentation form, um, you could use Prezi. Again, it's free and that presentation is stored straight out in the cloud. Unlike PowerPoint, um, you know, you'd have to put it in your uh, save it away to your own drive and then share it with people, send it by email uh, and so on. Which brings me to the point that um, using SlideShare is also a good facility. We use SlideShare a lot. Um, the presentation that we're doing now will actually be available after the session uh, by SlideShare. And by using SlideShare, it makes it such that um, you can actually get a much wider audience actually viewing your slides. Um, so, you know, for students that could be important perhaps for uh, collaborating with other people um, or for business, you know, trying to get a work placement, showing the different things that they might be sort of doing. So consider having a look at SlideShare. Don't just keep your PowerPoint on your uh, computer. Put it out there on the web and perhaps collaborate with like-minded people. Some other nice things about it, you can actually get some analytics from it, see who's been watching it and what sort of audience might be um, uh, sort of viewing it. Um, so, you know, there's lots of good things about taking your presentations just a little bit further, um, you know, by the use of SlideShare. Okay, um, and one last one, a uh, presentation tool that you may not have heard of is something called Powtoons. I know one or two colleges in our region are using that um, as an alternative to PowerPoint. Um, there is an example to a demonstration Powtoon in your uh, links that we've sent you at the beginning of the session, but basically, 
um, it allows you to create presentations, but there are lots of templates for animation to add in, and here's just an example. Here you can have people talking, you can have speech bubbles appearing, you can have things moving across the screen, you can have people, uh, images of people talking to each other, for instance, and it just adds another dimension to your um, presentation, so another level of interest maybe to engage your learners, so worth having a, a look at that one. So moving on to a few sort of editing tools, um, there's one I, I mentioned earlier about Photoshop. Um, you know, you might not have access to Photoshop. If you want access to Photoshop, um, that's going to cost you sort of five, six hundred pound. Um, if you were wanting to buy it for yourself for personal use, and that's a bit expensive for most people, uh, and also expensive for uh, for businesses. So. Um, what we're seeing is, is actually much more cloud-based um, editing tools, and one of the, the best ones I've seen certainly is Pix, PixLR. Um, so have a look at that. And this gets back to the idea of should we be teaching applications or should we be teaching concepts? PixLR just happens to be very much like Photoshop uh, in some way, but without the cost. Um, so you know, it's a good way to pick up the concepts. Um, and you know, not just for use by art and design students, perhaps, but you know, as we become much more sort of graphic media orientated in our normal sort of lives, and students wanting to do stuff graphically, um, then they might be interested in the in the free tool that's out there, Pixel Art. Um, some other tools underneath there, we've got we've mentioned EduCreation, Sketch, Show Me, and Explain Everything. Um, the only one that's not free there is uh, Explain Everything, which only costs a couple of pounds, I think. But I'm just going to tell you a little bit about um, EduCreations and give you an idea of what that does if you're not already aware. So um, you can access EduCreations via your PC, but you can also access it via your mobile device. It allows you to take an image, which could be one that you've taken with your mobile device, or it could be one from your documents or from uh, the internet. Um, then you can actually annotate and use different colors to annotate your image. And whilst you're doing that, you can also narrate over whatever it is you're doing, and you can add uh, several slides into your presentation. This is a great tool, really, for learners to use themselves with their own mobile devices, maybe for capturing evidence. Um, for instance, if you think of, say, a construction student building a wall, they might take several images. Uh, during the process and narrate and um, annotate what they're doing and justify what they've done. Uh, so great for capturing evidence of achievement, but also great for teachers, for instance, and you'll find a whole um, EduCreations community with resources that other um, teachers have put up there as well, sharing their ideas of how to use it. So for example, if you're solving a problem and you want to talk through how to do it with your learners, you can actually write on the screen and narrate as you're talking and explain your problem solving process. So great tool though and definitely worth a try if you want to create your own content and share and embed links via your virtual learning environment. Now, Lynn mentioned there about perhaps some brick layers with their bricks and what sort of um, uh, sort of walls they might have been uh, using, and so they can put pictures in the edu creations thing. But you know that sort of idea is, is extended a little bit further, with students actually now really having to create portfolios of some sort. Yes, we know about e-portfolios, but often they're sort of within the organisation, um, but it's not really showcasing what they are capable of and what your college or organisation is, is actually capable of. Um, so using other tools like Pinterest and WordPress and God forbid, as they say, um, Facebook. Um, but certainly going back to Pinterest, you know, there's a bit of a screenshot from Pinterest there, um, and it's great for actually putting in um, graphics and videos now, uh, perhaps of students' work or perhaps some um, collaboration that they've done, or even some sort of uh, handouts or graphics or worksheets, anything like that coming from from staff as well. Um, and you know the sort of things I've seen are perhaps catering students, perhaps putting in um, pictures of, of cakes that they might have seen that they want to try and emulate. Um, you know, sort of recipes, pictures, fashion design students. They're, they're just putting in all sorts of different things into Pinterest. Now, that might be for their research, perhaps gathering ideas from around the web, and you can pin these graphics from uh, any sort of web browser. 
but you know, if they want to create a portfolio of their own work, here's a great way of actually sending a link to their Pinterest to a potential employer. Um, so you know, whether it's for work placement or to actually supplement a CV um, uh, and you know, support uh, other sort of applications. So you know, the idea of having portfolios um, really needs to be extended a lot more, I think, by staff and my students. And certainly, if you think a little bit a bit more about perhaps the design um, industry, um, there's uh, there's one college that I know um, in the north of our region that's using WordPress for one of their groups of students, their art students particularly. And WordPress is a web design tool, but it's more or less the industry standard, I would say, for many websites that are actually out there because it's a marvelous tool for for making creative looking um, websites. And the students are actually creating a portfolio. You know, of their work, and they're able to blog about it, talk about it. So instead of just perhaps a boring word processed assignment, here's a chance to actually publish it in some form or another, and people will find it, uh, assuming, of course, it wants to be found. Um, so you know, there may be a, a sort of a, a need for a little bit of vetting here and there, and sort of approval. But you can draft it before you actually publish it um, in WordPress. So. You know, WordPress is a, a great advert for um, students to actually create uh, and interact with the world around them. Um, so, uh, Facebook, just uh, mentioned on there, it's possible to put your uh, photos and your videos up there. Um, and certainly in uh, the sort of education environment, you might want to consider creating a closed uh, Facebook group, um, so for a particular course, and so that students can actually interact in a, in a nice way. Yes, you can do some interaction in things like Moodle uh, and other uh, VLEs, but um, using something that probably the students might be more familiar with, Facebook, um, you know, then you know, it, it could be another chance to create some portfolios and, and a discussion. Thanks for that, Gordon. Just before we move on, as you mentioned WordPress um, in a portfolio context, I'd just like to flag up um, a link that we've put on the document we transferred at the beginning to um, an excellent example of using WordPress uh, to support vocational training. Um, and that was produced as part of a FE and Skills funded project last year by KM Training, and it's called Education-Net. Um, so you can explore that link after the session. Uh, and just to remind people that um, a new round of FE and Skills funding has just been um, released last week, and there should be details on the, the GIST website. The, um, I just want to say a little bit more about the WordPress um, with KM training there, WordPress learning uh, provided, perfect sort of thing um, is, is WordPress for actually creating VLEs and for sort of sharing resources. So if they can't do the, the Moodle because they haven't got the resources or expertise in the house, then you know, consideration of putting um, stuff up onto a, a WordPress site um, could be a way to actually share um, re resources with your students. So, just a, a few more portfolio tools. Um, Twitter, I mentioned there. Yes, you can put um, uh, video and uh, photos up on Twitter. Um, and the nice thing about Twitter is you are actually getting quite a wide uh, target audience. And I've known instances where students have been interacting and tweeting on Twitter, um, and you know some stalwarts of the, the sort of industry actually get in touch with them uh, or retweet what they've said. Uh, and so on. So, you know, people like Richard Branson, um, you know, has, has been seeing some of the stuff that people have put up, and will retweet it if it's interesting. Same with Peter Jones uh, and some singers. Uh, you know, it just depends what sort of um, target audience, perhaps yourself or your students, are actually tweeting about. Um, Tumblr is another um, sort of WordPress, sorry, a word um, process sort of um, website. So for sharing and portfolio in Vimeo, um, Vimeo is the sort of industry standard, I would say, for uh, video used very extensively now by uh, filmmakers, um, and so certainly art and design students and other students need to be thinking about creating a, a Vimeo portfolio that they can actually um, share with with people. And the nice thing is, you get feedback from you know lots of learned people out there as to you know the. Uh, what your video might be like. Um, uh, there's one there with Instagram. I think a lot of people know maybe Instagram. They have it as an app on their phone, um, and they take a photo and then instantly they put a, um, a retro toning 
um, to it, and then they created a nice photo in a square format, and then posted it up to um, uh, to Instagram instantly. Um, you don't have to retro it, but here's a good chance for students do a bit of work, take a picture of it, and uh, post it straight up to Instagram and get feedback again. So again, another portfolio tool, maybe a, a collaboration tool. And um, just following on with a, a couple of ones that sort of um, certainly affected my life, um, as I say, and may well affect other people's lives. Um, and you know, more on the sort of admin and lifestyle type thing. Um, Evernote. Um, I absolutely uh, love Evernote myself. Uh, just about any sort of note that I might be thinking of. Um, idea, I just type it straight into Evernote. Um, it's just a, a note-taking um, application, but a lot more than that because you can actually do uh, sound clip recording, um, you can uh, embed uh, documents, PDFs, Word documents. When I go to meetings, um, I don't get printouts, I put them into Evernote and then I can refer to them using tags, I can search within it all, um, and I can share. And now Evernote comes in a team um, format as well, so you can actually create sort of teams, collaboration teams, project teams to actually work on um, notes and share uh, with them. So really fantastic tool. Um, you can have it for free. You can, if you want more storage space, it's sort of £30 um, a, a year. So um, Zoho, just thinking of entrepreneurship. You know, maybe your students could be thinking of not necessarily working for somebody, but working for themselves. Lots of other tools out there now um, that are available for free. Um, a few that I mentioned, you know, do sort of invoices and um, content. Uh, sorry, contact relationship management, CRM systems, um, and, and that's one provided by Zoho. And you know, Google Apps offers some of these facilities as well. So I'm worth having a look at some of these different um, tools that are out there. Uh, just a little bit more from me, remote access. Um, some of you may have remote desktop from your organization, so you can log in from home or from outside of your organization. But perhaps your computer at home might be useful to actually log into, perhaps whilst you're on holiday um, or out for the day, uh, and you need to gain access to some files to send off somewhere. Um, you can use um, a web-based, um, cloud-based tool uh, called LogMeIn. And there are other ones available, and that will actually allow you to connect into your um, computer at home and use it as though you're actually sat in front of it. So that's quite a useful tool. I've used that quite a bit um, when I'm out and about. Good for supporting flexible working practices then, Gordon. Um, am I right in understanding that you do probably need to just download something to your computer with each of those, and that your computer does need to be on as well if you're going to access yeah, it remotely? That's right. Just it, You download um, a, a small... Um, program it runs on in the background on your computer your computer must be switched on but yes via the web you can actually go in there and, and log in as though you were there uh, as normal so I find it a very useful tool um, uh, a lot of the tools are bandwidth hungry can you network Wi-Fi cope um, you know it's a good question to ask if you're on wireless then you know some of the things will work uh, Will not work so well. I wouldn't, for instance, do log me in um, as uh, wouldn't use log me in on the, a Wi-Fi uh, because you know that that would be sort of bandwidth intensive. But certainly with a wired connection, um, uh, you know, if you're in an organisation somewhere out and about, then yeah, I would say it's it's available. Another one mentioned there is Team Viewer. Yes, that um, offers the same sort of facilities. Um, it's useful actually for providing remote access to. Um, uh, people that are, are struggling with something. A friend of mine, I, I've got their computer connected via LogMeIn, and I, I can um, log into that computer and help them uh, overcome any issues that they might be having setting them up or, or something. So, um, just uh, I mean, support of uh, whilst we're talking about um, TeamViewer uh, for remote access support uh, and other tools remote access. Um, sort of help desks I'm seeing now are actually using um, tools like um, Screencast-O-Matic, which is available for free. And essentially, you can work through a process on your computer and record it at the same time, and then save it away. 
add a bit of narration to it. And so, you know, save that away as a video so that somebody then can look at it at a later stage. You might put that on your VLE or your intranet um, or on uh, a website somewhere um, so they can actually play back how to log into your network system or you know how to you know create some um, sort of facilities within a, within an application uh, and so on. So I'm seeing help desks certainly starting to use this in, in some form or another. It's free. It's great stuff. So create some resources. It's so easy. Um, it really is. Um, and there's another one called Jing as well. Um, um, and just for a, a, a bit more on the, the sort of video editing side. Um, there's a number of tools that are mentioned there, uh, but one of the nice tools, a bit more fun perhaps, is one called Animoto. Um, and for your videos, if you're wanting to do some, uh, do a soundtrack for your video, Jamendo um, actually provides you with some um, sort of non-licensed, um, royalty-free um, sort of uh, music to, to supplement your video. So. Right, well, we have got a lot to get through, and we're sort of running out of time a little bit. So what we thought we would do is areas for um, cloud-based tools for web conferencing, e-assessment, cloud-based tools, and the whole sort of BYOD agenda. We've actually already addressed in um, previous in briefs and workshops that we've run. So in the file that we sent you, we sent links to existing resources on our Moodle for that. Uh, but a new resource is the uh, web conferencing toolkit, which um, has been produced by RSC Wales and was launched last week. And that's an excellent resource for those of you who haven't actually thought about um, adopting web conferencing to save time on travel costs, maybe, um, and for running meetings on large across large sites um, or supporting your learners. So lots of good stuff in that one. I'd urge you to look at that one when you get an opportunity. Um, and just sort of rounding things off nicely, um, we sort of advertise the, this, this sort of session uh, about actually sort of interacting with the, the sort of 21st century. Um, and you know, it's all about a work-life balance, really. Um, and it's just bearing that in mind. And the things that make it sort of work um, for yourself. Okay. Um, so the thing that um, we're sort of looking at now is sort of um, any sort of lifestyle and sports tools and apps and things. Now, apps um, on running on mobile devices can sometimes be an app that just runs on the device. But these ones that we're mentioning here actually do run out in the cloud. So you can actually interact from your um, mobile device, but you can also go to the website and perhaps see how you, you know, sort of your fitness is coming on or your diet or, or something. And if you start connecting um, you know the, uh, these tools in with maybe a, a Nike sensor in your running shoes. You can keep track of how fast you're going and how far you're going, uh, and, and so on. So, you know, all these tools are becoming available out there for us to sort of um, modify uh, our lifestyle um, or to you know, just keep track of what we're doing. Um, Money track is one worth mentioning uh, as well. It's one that I use personally, um, and. Instead of having to log on to multiple bank accounts that you might have, you know, with the current accounts so and so on. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a bit uh, over the top, doesn't it? Well, okay, there's two or three. Like your Swiss say. bank account yeah. area. <laughs> um, but um, Money Track allows you to, it's actually a website with money advice on it, and it actually, they run an application, uh, an app that you can actually um, connect your different accounts into, and it actually just provides you on one screen a sort of summary. Um, of it and, and so on. So, a um, nice easy way to keep track of your spending, perhaps, um, yeah. and you know how much money you haven't got at the end of the month. Right. And, so and KeyKeeper is another one for those of us who, uh, probably like myself, you've got so many logins for so many different resources and tools and websites that you use, and how do you keep track of all of your passwords? Well, KeyKeeper might be one that's worth um, looking at as well to help you manage all of that. Um, right, and um, all of these things um, that you, you know we've mentioned, they're all running. They could be running potentially within your organisation, um, coming over your network or through your Wi-Fi system. Um, and you know we've mentioned things like Facebook and Twitter and so on. And I know that some 
um, organisations, colleges, and work-based learning providers, and others, you know, they don't allow access always to these social networking sort of sites. So, um, I think you know, after the, the session, is just go back, take stock of what you've maybe um, seen and heard, uh, and do a bit more reading in the resources that we're pointing to. Um, but you've got to do a sort of risk management sort of exercise as to you know what is going to be doable uh, and what is allowable on on your network side. Um, and you know if you're using mobile devices, you know if there's going to be confidential information on that, making sure it's locked down. If you're using laptops, encrypted. You know it's all about sort of maintaining a secure sort of environment. So things like your data and so on. Um, and of course, none of this is much use. We're saying about internet. If we move over to a cloud-based sort of lifestyle um, and we start using lots of resources uh, outside of an organisation, but don't have the systems in-house, then you've got to make sure your um, internet system, your Janet connection, if you're if you're a college, is is all functioning well. So that service availability bit is is very important. Um, some other resources that are worth looking at um, on the legal side come from our uh, colleagues in Just Legal, um, and they produce some toolkits for cloud computing uh, and uh, BYOD, bring your own device. So worth having a look at. Get your IT teams to have a look. Get the managers to have a look. You know, like I say, do a, an assessment of you know what is appropriate for your organisation. Um, but some you'll be able to take a lot away, perhaps to use in your personal life as well. So, so look at those resources. We make links to them on the um, worksheet, additional worksheet that we've um, sort of given uh, with the session. Uh, right. I would just like a little bit of your input just before the end, if we could, please, about um, whether it's worth putting on either a half or a full day event um, early in the new year to follow up from this um, in brief session, more of a hands-on session, um, exploring some of the tools, and so what we'd like you to do is to um, share your ideas um, for what areas you'd like us to focus on if we were to put such an event on. I'm just posting that into the, uh, the link into the um, chat pane now. So if you could um, access that and maybe start sharing um, some thoughts about what you would like to have for a half or a full day event, what you'd like us to focus on, and then if there is a, a demand, we'll try and support that in the, early in the new year. So if you could just copy that link yourself, uh, we'd appreciate that. Uh, and you can carry on writing into that after the session's finished. Um, but we are coming up now to um, the end of the session. And so I'd just like to flag you up uh, to our next in brief session, which will be on uh, Friday the 6th of December. And that is going to be about um, a new tool called Raptor, which stands for Recording and Planning for Technology in Action. It's a tool that will fit in with your quality improvement processes and your self-assessment report, and it helps you to evaluate your effective use of technology to support teaching, learning, and assessment, and it ties in with the um, Common Inspection Framework uh, criteria as well. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, the details, I think, have gone up on our website to book on that today. Find some more information there on the website. All of the resources from today's session and the recording um, and the presentation will be um, on this bit.ly link that you can see here, which will take you to our, all our in brief resources and previous ones that we've um, held as well. So I'd just like to thank you for listening in today and for the ideas and things that you've shared with us. And um, say thanks to Gordon for his contribution yeah, as well. Thank you, so, yeah, thank you for everybody. Uh, thank you for all your participation. It, it's nice when that happens. Um, and we hope to see you again uh, very soon. So, um, just a few little bits there. Kevin's put um, something in there, a bit of a tweak. Um, so, just take note of that perhaps just before you. For where the next sort of event thing. is. Yep. Yeah, and if you could, if you have time, please. Um, Give us some ideas for what you'd like for a hands-on workshop on uh, or workshops on cloud-based learning tools. Okay. Thank you very much. So thank you. Look forward to seeing you again soon. <laughs>